All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we're a webinar, webinar um, is a common terminology. Um, we're an online show, um, webcast, uh, Whatever you want to call us, we are live here every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, live here online. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and you can watch all of our recordings on our website at a time that is convenient to you. And at the end of today's show, I will show you where all those recordings are and where to do them this morning's show will go. Uh, we do a variety of things here on the show. Um, oh, both the show, the live show, I, I should mention, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, please do share with any of your friends, uh, colleagues, family members, anybody who might be interested in um, any of the topics that we have um, here on the show. Um, we do a mixture of things here, uh, book reviews, mini training sessions, interviews, demos of products and software and programs. Uh, basically, anything library related um, is on our show. We don't have much. Um, that's really the only criteria, something that libraries are doing, something they're interested in, something they could be doing, um, programs, uh, new technology they could use, um, all sorts of different things. So just anything related to uh, libraries and all types of libraries. Um, we, are not, we don't really have any limit to that as well. We've had museum libraries, special libraries, public academic, we're all over the place. <laughs> um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations sometimes. But we also um, bring in guest speakers uh, from outside of the commission, which we have this morning. On the line of us, on the line with us, <laughs> is Ros <laughs> Rosella Tesh. Hello, good morning, Rosella. Hi, how are you? And uh, thank you for having me here. Yeah. And Rosella is she's out in uh, Western Nebraska, way on the other side of the state from me, um, and she's the library director at Shadron Public Library. Um, where, and I've been out there before. I've visited across the state, so I've been to the area. Um, I like going up to Shadron, just as a, as a side. Lots of, much of Nebraska, as anyone who's from here knows or might know, is, is very open and flat and, you know, plains. But then in, up in this uh, northwest corner of the state, there's this awesome uh, forest. <laughs> uh, pine trees, as far as I can see in some of the areas, and it's a really nice kind of cozy area to travel and visit at. Um, and that's where Shadron Public Library is up there. And um, Rosella is going to tell us about this great uh, film festival they've been doing for the, this is the third year, right? Yes, yes. Um, was it the third year? And mm -hmm. uh, I would like to say mm -hmm. I have here with me at the library, Marguerite Bay Miller. She is uh, the person that with me um, has uh, brought to life trading stories. <laughs> So Great. we will try to share the microphone. Okay. All right. No problem. So Go ahead and take a side. It's about it. Okay. Um, first of all, you can see here on the screen uh, the logo of Trading Story, and uh, it's a Native American movie festival. Uh, where we are located, uh, we are here in northwest Nebraska, like Krista said, very close to the border with South Dakota. And this is important. Shadron is what is called the border um, city because it border with um, not only with um, closer to the state of South Dakota, but also with uh, the Pine Ridge Reservation. There is lots of uh, coming and going. Pine Ridge doesn't have its own library, and so many people when they come to shop down to Shadron, and they also use our facility. So lots of our patrons are Native American. Okay, we are going to give you a little view of what is Shadron. Right now, football is one of the biggest things because it's fall. Um, we are in the Pine Ridge area. It's very beautiful. Lots of ponderosa pine, lots of scenic views. Downtown Shadron has historic building. This is um, the building from where the Shadron Chicago horse race in 1800 um, start. Here it's a view of downtown um, Shadron business district. 
And here there is a, a sorry, I went too fast. There is a view of uh, Erodius. We are kind of a an agriculture service slash tourist community. All right. Um, so a little bit of facts about Shadron. Our population is 5,775 people. Like I said, uh, uh, agriculture, services, tourism are some of our um, way to prosper and survive. Shadron State College is uh, a very important presence. Shadron is also the headquarters for the Nebraska and Samuel and um, Samuel McKelvey National Forest and the Buffalo Gap, Fort Pierre and Ogallala National Grasslands. So there are lots of uh, open spaces. Um, there is a museum, very famous, internationally famous, the Museum of the Fur Trade. And it's located um, on the site of the ancient American Fur Company's post, was called uh, the Bordeaux Trading Post. In the Lakota language, Chadron is known as Chapawaka or Tujanwahe, which means uh, Beaver River City. Um, this is a, rather important because one of um, the features of, of Shadron is a Fur Trade Days festival. It takes place in uh, July, in the second week of July. And um, it's a celebration of the Fur Trade. And it's very well known statewide and beyond the state borders. It's also part of our culture and heritage. And here are some of the photos of the Fur Trade Days. As you can see, it's important enough that um, city council every year has a proclamation. Okay, um, I'm going to show you some images of um, Pine Ridge because Pine Ridge is also part of what uh, the reality of Shadron is and it's also part of what the movie festival is about. Uh, this is a photo of our library, and library is a little bit li the link between Shadron and uh, the Pine Ridge Reservation because people come here and use our services. So uh, Pine Ridge has a beautiful scenery. Uh, part of it this uh, stand uh, to the Badlands. Not everything in Pine Ridge is beautiful. Unfortunately, there are still poverty and other problems. But also there are hopes. And one of the hopes is uh, the Heritage Center. It's um, a kind of museum slash um, um, trading place for art in uh, Pine Ridge. And it's run by the Jesuits. And here there is uh, a photo of their shop. OK, some fact about Pine Ridge. Um, tribal government um, records 38,000 people enrolled in the tribe. The poverty in Pine Ridge is extreme. And um, of um, 2007, employment rate was 80-90% of the cap per capita an income of $4,000, eight times the United States rate for diabetes, five times the United States rate of cervical cancer, twice the rate of heart disease, eight times the United States rate for tuberculosis, alcoholism rates as high as 80%, one in four in four infants born with fetal alcohol syndrome or the effects of it, suicide rate more than twice the national rate, teen suicide rate four times the national rate, infant mortality is three times the national rate, and life expectancy in Pine Ridge, it's the lowest in the United States and the second lowest in the Western Hemisphere. Um, I'm not saying these facts to sadden people or to make a political statement. It's because those facts reflect in the movies that um, we show sometimes. And so I wanted to give a, a kind of a comprehensive idea of what to 
what we're doing. So, um, how the movie festival <laughs> began, it began on, be, began on a winter, very cold day. I went to City Hall and um, the president of the Food Trade Days Association, Barb McDaniel, asked me, can you do something, can the library do, can do something to bring new programs to Food Trade Days? And uh, I taught a long time, and then I came out with um, three activities, a movie festival, a ghost hunt, and a quilt show. Um, the quilt show never took flight. Uh, it was too much. We indeed still do the ghost hunts, and we do two of them during the movie festival. In fact, we have projects to integrate those ghost hunts into the movie festival for next year. Um, the first uh, committee was made up of Annette Bellew, she was our children's librarian, myself and Marguerite Vemiller. Marguerite is um, one of the foundation members. Tell me when you want Marguerite to talk again. <laughs> All right, so oh, the um, first movie first. Rosella, yeah. no, it's up to you. Whenever she wants to chime in, you guys can go right ahead and <laughs> um, okay. whatever right. works for you guys, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. so the first movie festival uh, took place in July 2014. And so why a movie, uh, why a Native American, <laughs> sorry, why a Native American movie festival? Uh, first of all, Native American culture is an integral part of Shadron, as I said. Many of Shadron public library users are Native Americans. Many Native American art forms are vibrant and interesting. Native American culture was part of food trade days in the past. Many from all over the U.S. and abroad are interested in Lakota and other American, Native American culture and come to Northwest Nebraska to study them. A good fit for Southern Public Library, uh, we have a collection, it's called the Indigenous People of North America. It's uh, a comprehensive collection about the Native populations. And also to bring hope and highlight the positive and discuss issues, sometimes issues of um, Native Americans are ignored or just people don't know about it. So, so the, like I said, the first movie festival uh, started July 2014. And so we began way back in January though, uh, to search for titles and we looked on the internet other festival, friends and family ideas. Um, one of the issues and the problem we had was how we complied with copyrights. It's a big issue. Um, usually the movies we show are um, in these movies are um, movies that don't, they are not uh, in the commercial stream, so to find the company that owns the copyright, it's uh, incredibly hard and time consuming and sometimes very expensive. Um, sometimes uh, just a movie um, copyright for one showing can be $300, $350. We also had to search for guests and uh, again we use friends, family, Twitter, um, Net was um, knowledgeable of uh, many of uh, the people that work in the reservation in the art fields. Um, and so Marguerite, and they have way more uh, knowledge and uh, content than I do. We also had to hunt for money <laughs> and we use for the first year the library budget, friends and foundation mo money. Um, publicity was one of our concern because of course we were starting from scratch and nobody knew about us and so that entailed making poster flyers and brochure, go to radio shows, talk to city council and so on and so forth. 
the distribution of a publicity material and the public relation was another point. And uh, Marguerite and her daughter Monica traveled hundreds of miles just to hang posters. Uh, we also had to build a rep reputation for our brand, uh, for our name. We knew that we wanted to continue and we wanted to do for years and years to come. Uh, finding partners, uh, we found uh, a, part, a, good, a good fit uh, with uh, the Museum of the Fur Trade. They were interested to work with us. We wanted also to honor the Native American traditions of um, when you do a party. And so we decided that the movie festival was going to welcome everyone and have a food and refreshment for um, every show of movies, just like a Native American gathering would have. Um, sorry. And then uh, the making, I switch the words, the letters um, of a logo. Logo was uh, very important. And Okay. Uh, okay. Oops. So the logo was an idea of Margaret, and so I'm going to pass the microphone to her. Hi, I'm adjusting the headset here. <laughs> Uh, so the logo in terms of, oh, I'm Marguerite Bay Miller, and I'm with the Shadron Public Library Foundation, and this has been a, a wonderful program to work on. Uh, the Trading Stories logo was actually developed uh, through a friend who's uh, a teacher in the art department at Shadron State, and I asked if she could help us try to develop something that would reflect what we're doing. Uh, the logo, as you see, uh, does reflect what we believe to be the trading of stories. Uh, the, the term or the uh, brand, you might say, trading stories plus the logo was designed to reflect uh, regarding the fur trade period of Shadron, the history of Shadron. And one of the things that was happening, as Rosella mentioned, in terms of the Fur Trade Day celebration and around the Fur Trade Day Museum, was that it was celebrating just part of the fur trading to history of Shadron. Uh, it was neglecting, or not through an intention, but just as things happened, to not really pay much attention to who those fur traders were trading with, which was the uh, area indigenous community, the Lakota people. So the the logo and also the brand of trading stories which we are now copywriting and trademarking um, was designed to reflect that the 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 two coming together and telling stories to each other so <laughs> do you want to go with this all right so every Every time we have done a movie festival, we had also some bumps in the road. And we have learned that one of the lessons, it's expect the unexpected and really go with the flow. We had the first year we had unwelcome, I mean, very welcome, but unexpected guests that we had no idea were going to come. We had to iron basically the movie screen, and that was a very strange story, but our movie screen was uh, at first uh, located upstairs, and um, one of uh, the art directors, we had invited some of the art directors and actors and characters of the movies, didn't like the screen as it was. So I had to go to Walmart and buy just a plain sheet and um, iron it because they had the whole crisis. So weird stuff that um, you don't even know is going to happen is going to come down. And um, we were also worried and um, for about protesters and troublemakers because of some of the movies we showed were kind of controversial at the time. And here are the the 
one, the 2014 movies where I think Dark for a uh, fog, Young Lakota, and Young Lakota it's about abortion in the reservation, which at the um, at the time in the 2010 was still uh, permitted, is not now. Um, we had invited Cecilia Fire Thunder. She had been the leader of the tribe, and then uh, she had been, uh, if I remember well, fired. And Cecilia Fire Thunder is an incredibly enthusiastic woman. She's also seen as a controversial figure by some. So we were a little bit worried, but we also thought, hey, this is the reality of life. We want to show the issues as they are. And so we had discussed uh, the finding security, and then we decided for now, nothing happened really. Everybody was very happy to talk with Cecilia. She gives you energy and she fires you up. So she's a blessing of a woman. Um, another m movie was Ishtima, and Ishtima was um, done, or actually, um, Russell means son, and for those who do not know or are not familiar with um, uh, Pine Ridge, Russell Mean was uh, a, an activist, very famous during the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and his son Scott is also an activist and a very interesting person. So that was another reason we were a little bit <laughs> on the edge. Crazy Horse, um, Crazy Horse, we had picked up the movie, it was uh, an old um, movie from the 50, we wanted to show how Native Americans were portrayed back then and the difference with what um, it's uh, the portray of Native Americans in um, cinematography now. Um, so <clears throat> was an interesting movie to put there. We had the sitting bull voice. We had invited uh, the grand, great grandson of a sitting bull, Ernie Lapointe. And with Ernie came uh, the director of that movie. And also, like I said, another guest. Um, that was a really nice and fun per person. People love to talk to him. And then we showed Smoke Signals, which is uh, a feature movie. Okay, so I have already talked about uh, all the guests. And uh, last one is Jim Kent. And I want Marguerite to explain this point because this was very crucial for the life and the continuation of the movie festival. And Jim, it's a uh, Kent, it's a person that Marguerite knows very well. We had invited Jim Kent, uh, a journalist, to uh, he's in the Rapid City area, actually Hot Springs, just north of Shadron, and he writes for the Rapid City Journal, the major newspaper in that area, one of the major newspapers of South Dakota. But he also uh, is with uh, South Dakota Public Radio. He covers uh, for for them different um, different pieces and he also writes for Lakota Times so um, he's a very influential uh, journalist and uh, writes very well and he he was I knew him and I invited him to come and view the first film festival it was interesting he wasn't really particularly interested in fur trade days itself that celebration he said every community has their parades and whatnot and whatever but the fact that um, we were doing a movie festival centered around uh, the Native American culture of the area. He thought that that was really significant. When he came, he covered it. Not just did he cover it very well, he wrote an amazing article, uh, which was published in the Rapid City Journal. Uh, but he also wrote um, for, the, as I said, the Lakota Times. But 
carried it um, as well by South Dakota Public Radio. And he, in the article, he praised the indigenous collection of Shadron Public Library and compared it to other libraries within just South Dakota and also Nebraska and also uh, in places such as um, Black Hill State University and Rapid City uh, Library and said that this was a far better collection, the fact that it was a very specified collection with its own area, the library, whereas everywhere else that he found had integrated uh, anything they had on indigenous people within their main collection. So he praised that in terms of the small library here, um, what they were doing with indigenous uh, works. Uh, Jim has since then covered uh, other areas and other film festivals and is totally um, involved in, in, in what we're doing here. And uh, we'll talk more about what we've done just this past year as well, but he's very significant uh, for us in terms of um, uh, publicizing what we're doing. And because of what he did, we were very quickly after the publication, we were contacted by the Dahl Museum uh, in Rapid City, asked if we could bring the movie festival there, if that was possible. And also um, South Dakota Arts, uh, the uh, State um, Arts Commission, asked if we could somehow uh, produce this in Western South Dakota and that they would pay us uh, to do that and you know we just thought we, we can't do that we can't travel with this or whatever but it was a very nice compliment and that was uh, the result of Jim's work and his publicizing what we were doing all right okay so um, has Margaret Mm, just so you really scored big um, with uh, the article in the Rapid City Journal and uh, also the radio st local radio stations were able to um, support us as well as the newspapers and um, the piece of Jim Kent was also transmitted through the Native American radio that covers US and Canada. So um, we came to decide to continue. Like I said, the, the will to do it was uh, at the beginning. We knew that we wanted to do this and continue to through the years and uh, making it bigger for the library. And so the July 2015 season, um, one of the committee members, Annette Bell, left. She left Shadron. She moved away. So we had, we were two, and we really had to dig down deep. It's lots of work, and um, you have to start uh, around January. It's a uh, work on top of work. It's not that uh, we can put aside the library work and say, well, we're doing the movie festival. It has to be combined. So we had to find our own personal ways. You have to have uh, motivations in your soul to do this kind of stuff at uh, the small town level that we have. There are no many resources and it's lots of work. We renew the format and adding presenters and finding other partners. So Southern Art Center became a partner. They, they were to do a art display at the same time that we did uh, the movie festival. Of course, uh, the um, art display was going to be of uh, Native American art. The, again, the Museum of, of the Fur Trade. Rotary supported us uh, with uh, a monetary donation. Uh, we made the links with the Heritage Center um, in Pine Ridge. The Dose County Traveling Board supported us, again, uh, monetarily. And so the Friends of the Library, the Food Three Days Committee, and the Southern Public Library Fund Foundation. Um, we found a theme and that rotated mostly around horse, the horse in the Native American culture. And uh, like I said, we added visual arts. This um, 
portrait of the horse was uh, uh, donated by Marguerite to the library and it was made by an artist. Her name it was Ardit Morse. She just passed away. It's a beautiful horse. The other reason also why we decided for horses was that um, um, a documentary had just been uh, edited and prepared for viewing in Pine Ridge and the name was We Are a Horse Nation. We were able to um, to have it as a, a preview here at the library to show it as a preview here at the library. And, um, and it's a beautiful movie and uh, of course it talks about uh, the relationship between Lakota and the horses. Oh, okay. Here I, I listed only two movies. Um, they were the main one, the main ones that um, we showed, but we had other ones. So we are a horse nation and Powwow Highway. Marguerite was the one who found that we are a horse nation, and she will explain to you how and why. Well, the film We Are a Horse Nation was uh, it's a documentary. It was made on Pine Ridge, and um, and what it what it documents is the relationship between uh, Native Americans and and the horse. And on the Lakota people uh, do very elaborate um, decorations, beadwork, uh, headdresses for the horses. Um, yeah, it, it's, the, the detail is, is, is quite amazing and quite striking. But this was an important film to show what went on uh, on the reservation in terms of the relationship between the people and the horse, uh, but also you know, how they use the horse, uh, not just for ceremonial purposes, but uh, throughout their life, actually, in terms of um, the things that they do. So in terms of finding it was uh, making contact again with the director of the film and the producer of the film, meeting them and saying that uh, this is what we're doing. They were very pleased to know that uh, this was something that was going on in Chadron in a border community to the reservation and were willing to allow us to uh, show a preview of the film before it was actually released to the public. It is now actually um, a known film and uh, something that Rosella doesn't even know yet. I just returned from uh, several weeks in Montana and I was in um, Dear Lodge, Montana, and uh, just in speaking to someone at the Visitor's Bureau there, I was interested in, in touring something, and she said, where are you from? And I said, Shadron. And she actually was aware of well, Fort Robinson, but also had been through the area, knew of the film festival and uh, fur trade days, and then we also talked about this particular film because she had come through during the time that we had shown it. So um, we then talked about the, uh, the relationship of, of, of horses and uh, indigenous people. So we got to be known even in, in Montana. So it was uh, sort of a chance meeting and uh, uh, a, a nice thing to hear that, uh, that this had been, been known there. So anyway. Okay, so in 2015, we also wrote a grant uh, with uh, the Humanity, um, Nebraska Humanities, uh, to bring guest speakers, and one was Joyzel Gangway Goffrey. Uh, she's in ethnology and a performer, um, and she wrote when Lewis and Clark met. I mean, she presented about when Lewis and Clark met the CU. And we had also Jerome Kiosmo. Um, he's an herbalist and a shaman, and uh, he presented herbs and medicines of the Lakota. Uh, small things went wrong that year. We lost uh, a performer. There was one who arrived late. I almost had a heart attack, and Marguerite was like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> um, one got sick, and um, well, we had the same misunderstandings, so it was uh, 
very, very stressful. Okay, um, I would like to talk a little bit before we move on about uh, the attendance. Um, in 2014, when we began, we had 96 people attending the festival. The festival lasted three days. In 2015, um, the attendance grew to 195, and this year we had 560 people in attendance. So we are really thrilled about this. So here we come to the third edition of the movie festival, July 2016. Uh, Rosella, I just yeah. said, that's that's a pretty amazing increase in in attendance there, jumping up from less than 100 to over 500. Wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. and that is due to lots of work. First of all, lots of, of uh, learning from your mistakes and uh, learning how to publicize and learning how to make links and just work in the crowd. And mm -hmm. when I mean work in the crowd, it's you go to radio stations and uh, you go on air. We started very early this year mm -hmm. um, being present at KCSR. Um, I think we went to the radio station three or four times we went to, we go to the city council and we start to present there ahead because they transmit um the council meetings on tv we have expanded we send our announcement by letters and posters to three states also we take advantage of every time we get out of Shadron to hang posters i went to tour denver so i stop in every single little town between here and hang <laughs> <laughs> posters yeah. and Marguerite and her daughter have done the same <laughs> so what like I said, we from hundreds of miles away that's pretty yeah that's that's dedication yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. um, we also pretty, go yeah. to Pine Ridge and uh, we talk to agencies to people we hang posters and so on and so forth yeah a lot of word of so, mouth I'm sure of people talking about it out there as well and getting these you know being able to premiere these movies for the first time that's a, that's definitely a big draw yeah and also we have a start to put ads in the newspaper um, huh? it, it's kind of like a, a, a circle you start to be famous then mm -hmm. I mean famous you start to get attention and so people start to ask you about and um, you know, it, it works that way. We also have started, because we are known, we were able to get more monetary help this year. And so we were able to put our ad on several newspapers. Mm. So one thing brings to the other. It's like a, a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice. Yeah. Um, so um, the highlights of this year, um, we found a wonderful person to work with us. So she's an artist. Her name is Crystal Ferris Gibson. She's of mixed heritage and uh, she's part of Lakota. And so she has lots of um, um, contacts in Pine Ridge and also here in Shadron. She also has um, an incredible vibrant energy and I think um, we have been feeding a, you know from each other energy because like I said there's lots of work so you need to have somebody sometimes push you and so on and so forth um, we divided the festival into parts because uh, again Marguerite was able to bring to us Medicine Woman and I want Marguerite to talk now about Medicine Woman Well, as Rosella said, one of the highlights for this year was the fact that we were able to uh, premiere the film Medicine Woman. Um, it's uh, it's a NET film uh, produced for uh, public radio. It will be on PBS uh, in November of this year. And uh, it is the story of Suzanne LaFleche, who is the first Native American physician uh, who also 
she's female, but she, she's actually the first Native American physician. And also, as the film is billed, uh, the first Native American physician and the women who have followed in her footsteps, one of whom is on the Rosebud Reservation, which is close to us as well. It's uh, adjacent to Pine Ridge. It was an amazing documentary. Uh, the Humanities Nebraska helped to uh, fund uh, fund this for us to be able to have the premiere here, and it just came about through uh, several contacts that I had with the Nebraska Indian Commission, and in talking with them about what we were doing here and uh, ha having them help us to try to promote it uh, within the state. Uh, with those contacts, they talked about the fact that this film was being made, and I then got in touch with uh, Vision Makers and uh, the uh, makers of the film there, and uh, through a series of uh, conversations and whatever, um, asked if there was any possibility that we could show the film uh, in Shadron uh, as part of this festival, and they agreed, and Humanities Nebraska also agreed to, to help fund it, as I said, so um, to bring out um, the producer of the film and uh, to be able to have uh, one of the main characters in the film here, um, it was really just quite wonderful for us to have this premiere here. They also allowed us to use the artwork that was developed um, for the film in terms of the uh, publicizing of it. And so we were able to use that as part of our publicity and the posters that we produced for that. So it was uh, very exciting that we were able to have a film premiere just within the third year of our film festival. So. All right, and here are the posters that um, Margaret was talking about. This is uh, the poster made by Crystal for the movie festival. I'm sorry it looks a little bit dark on the screen. Um, it has uh, all the programs, and here at the bottom you can see all the organizations that sponsored us. I have to also to say that for the first time we had um, a business donor. We are very excited. We hope that uh, there will be more private donors um, that will help to support us. And here it's the other one. And um, it's a beautiful poster, and like I said, we, if I remember well, we made 500 posters of this one and another 500 of um, Medicine Woman. They were very beautiful, uh, done in very strong paper, and so people kept taking them down, and we had to go back and putting them up and so on and support, because they really wanted a souvenir of um, the themes of this year were healing in the traditional way, and so um, the movie Medicine Woman. Also, the guests, um, we had again Jerome Kilsmall. He did uh, an introductory opening ceremony the first night of the movie festival. And by the way, um, we have expanded the movie festival to five, five days. So, um, and also, we partnered with uh, Southern State College and Southern State College Herbarium. Dr. Susan Rolfsmeyer um, did the presentation before Medicine Woman on um, Native American herbs. So she looked at the herbs, um, the perspective of a botanist. Um, Steve Rolfsmeyer, the director of uh, Southern State um, College Herbarium, did also a presentation talking about the herbarium and the collection of Native American herbs held in, um, in the herbarium. 
We also had music, uh, flute music by Michael Murphy before the showing of the movie. The art director of the movie was present at the viewing and she was very gracious and uh, she um, took questions from the audience and I should talk a little bit more about that. We call the movie festival Trading Stories because we want the artist to sit down with the public and trade the stories, talk about how they make those movies or how they make their art pieces so that it becomes um, a sharing, a real sharing of human beings. It's not just I go to the movie, I see the movie and that, that's it. There are stories around movies, there are stories around artworks, and there are stories of the people that come to see the movie festival and they bring their stories and they are supposed that sometimes they do share. In fact, we had a quite a discussion during one of the other movies. So, um, heart and selling tools for people. Crafts as economic tool for sustenance of Lakota. Um, partner and sponsor this year were the Dose County Travel Board, Shadron Public Library Foundation, Shadron Public Library Friend, um, Friends, Dose County Travel Board, Food Trade Days Committee, Heritage Center. Um, out of the Red Cloud School in Pine Ridge, Nebraska Art Council, Nebraska Humanities, NET Radio, and Peterson Drug Store. The movies were Medicine Woman, The Revenant, Great Wolf, and Little Mouse Sister. And um, this is a cartoon. We dedicated one day to children this year. And um, we had the movie. We also had a lady, Vanna Bannon. She was uh, for many years a teacher both in Pine Ridge and uh, in Chagrin. And she read the story part in English, part in Lakota. At the end of the story time, we serve uh, um, fried bread and watch happy. And um, like I said, we served. Um, food during every movie showing. For Medicine Woman we had purchased a huge cake in the tradition of the Lakotas. So there was uh, the poster that you have seen had been um, reproduced on top of the cake. And it was a huge, huge cake. <laughs> um, Res Bomb. Res Bomb was um, done in part in Rushville. It's another independent movie. American Interior. That was done partially in Ireland. <laughs> and uh, a funny movie. We had a fun day, the last day of the movie festival, with uh, more than fried bread. And uh, we tried the stand up comedy, but. Um, I think people were tired after so many um, celebration downtown that day, and so did that the the open mic didn't go too well. We had only one person <laughs> attending. We hope to expand the open mic next year and um, work it a little bit more. So the other programs. We had bidding demonstration by Stephanie Sorbel. Uh, she is uh, a bidding and jewelry artist from Pine Ridge. Just to give an idea, she had bidded up, bidded a um, carriage, a little baby carriage, all with tiny little beautiful um, bidding work. We had a photographic show by um, Tom Swiftbert. Is uh, a, an artist that grew up he, between here and Pine Ridge. A musical show and lab by Michael Murphy. Michael did uh, the music presentation before Medicine Woman. He stayed with us the day after and did some more music and also taught um, about um, how you play the flute. And he ended up showing to little ones and big ones how to make flutes. And that was a really a big success with the crowds. 
art showing by Crystal Ferris Gibson. Um, Crystal had some of her pieces here at the library. And like I said, the story time in Lakota by Ivan Bannon. And um, then we had the fried bread and chuck cherry syrup as one of the treats. And also we had um, several displays around the library. We had um, jewelry, be the jewelry from the Heritage Center in cases. We also had um, a Native American um, deer skin dress that was hanging from the ceiling, a shawl. During the movie festival, we transform the library. We take um, many of our regular furniture pieces out and we bring other things in to give uh, uh, more of um, a flavor and more texture to, to the ambience of the library. So we had these jewelry in cases, we had cases with uh, medicine, a medicine pouch and uh, what else? Other artifacts and of course herbs and uh, smudging tools. So the library transformed itself and um, the, because we accumulate objects and so on and so forth. Every year becomes better and different. So this was a little bit uh, about the medicine woman. If you go on the uh, NET um, website, you will see this piece. You also will see still, they still have the announcement that the Shadow Public Library was going to show a preview. And I was thrilled when I saw that. I said, oh, we're still there. Um, we should talk a little bit about the Revenant, the Revenant of, of um, um, DiCaprio Oscar winning movie. <clears throat> so as I said before, we partner with uh, the Museum of Fur Trade and uh, the owner, Dr. Jim Hansen, was the consultant for the movie The Revenant the historical consultant. And so we invited him the second night of the movie festival to introduce the movie The Revenant. I was able to get um, the copyright to, to show it from uh, Century Fox. They were very gracious. They didn't charge much. I was really thrilled about that. We tried to bring the Caprio. We were not able to, but, <laughs> but it was an interesting. Yeah, <laughs> 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 well, it's great that you actually got them to let you um, do it, and it wasn't too overwhelming. It's so, that shows just you know, ask and you never know what you can. Yeah, get. exactly. <laughs> it's always in the asking. Actually, asking, I have met lots of uh, upcoming um, movie directors and uh, actors. Uh, Sometimes I contact them in Twitter, and they're very gracious. Uh, the majority answer. And the majority say, yes, if I can, I can come, or yes, you can have the movie to show, and so on and so forth. Right now, we're working toward the next uh, year festival. <laughs> Already is, is storming. I'll leave you with uh, some Margaret comments. About the next. Well, this year, as Rosella said, um, prove to be quite popular. And one more thought before we get into what we're going to do next year, what we're starting to think about in regards to the premiere of Medicine Woman. We had no idea how many people would show up. There's no way for us to determine that. Um, everything is free of charge and it's uh, you know, a wonderful respite from other activities that are going on with Fur Trade Day. It's usually at the time this is taking place, uh, it's 100 degrees outside in Shattern and, and uh, very dusty and dry. 
and so the library is a wonderful place to cool off and the fact that you can even get uh, a little sustenance while you come in into the air conditioning and, and watch films and see artists is uh, quite refreshing for people but when we showed Medicine Woman we made it into a whole day in that um, as Rosella mentioned people were able to tour the herbarium at Shadron State College uh, which is uh, quite well known in terms of the collection that is there and then we had um, Jerome Kilsmall open the uh, the festival basically and introduce Medicine Woman but he not only gave a talk on traditional herbs but uh, he also did a, a traditional blessing uh, for us and, and for the opening of the festival and then of course uh, the Ross Milers uh, talking about uh, the use of herbs uh, in the Lakota tradition as well and then moving into the to the film um, as I said we had no idea how many people would be attending but as they started coming in uh, just you know, with Jerome's uh, presentation, um, with the Ross Myler's presentation, we realized that uh, we've always known that the library is too small for what we try to do here. And that was certainly uh, the case. And we hadn't even gotten to the film yet, and the place was really extremely crowded. Uh, by the time it was for the showing of the film, uh, people were out the door and uh, out on the sidewalk and it was not just standing room only we couldn't even admit everybody into the building some people just left and hoped that they could see the film some other time what we had to do when we saw how many people we have is to very quickly make a very quick um, reconfiguration of chairs and how we were uh, going to present and so that people could see so it was quite exciting uh, a little scary but we were able to within 10 minutes uh, actually with everybody's help reconfigure all the furnishings and uh, where we were producing the, showing the film so um, looking towards next year we thought this was uh, this is a good problem to have to have uh, more people than uh, you can really accommodate and to have it be known that this is something really very special and maybe you need to get there early because you might not be able to get in and that might be how we um, bill it next year so what we're doing next year uh, what we started talking about one of the things we wanted to do this year was to show a film in it's a Sherman Alexi uh, made film and it has to do with his poetry as well but it's called um, Fancy Dancing and uh, uh, we weren't able to get permission to show it for this year and everything else just the way it was coming together we thought that we would uh, hold it for next year and we'll work on that but also we want to have a performing artist um, come in who is a fancy dancer as well and to pair that with the film and so that's part of what we will be working on and we have some other ideas too in terms of films and I just learned the other day of a very prominent um, uh, film director who uh, lives on Pine Ridge and has worked on a number of major films and we'll be making some contact with him to see not only what he's doing right now in terms of films but also if we could get him here to uh, to talk about filmmaking uh, particularly for younger people so we have a lot that we're starting already to to work on for next year so we're not waiting till January uh, we realize that we need to start working uh, probably you know really putting it together in October so all right and like um, as Margarita said, Margarita said um, we didn't have enough space this year so we're going to use the winter month to reconfigure the furniture and the shelves the bookshelves upstairs so that we will have more room for next year for people to sit down and watch the movies I forgot to say that um, last year we purchased a um, movie theater screen the same size so we have a huge screen we have uh, also a very good projector we are going to purchase more speakers so that people can really have um, good audio and um, 
several people have asked me, why don't you do the movie festival at downtown at the movie theater? We don't want to do that because, first of all, we want people to come and see the library and also see that we need to have a renovation of the library. It's um, unique to us. We also want to continue to offer it in the traditional Lakota way, which is you offer food, you sit down and before and after you discuss the movies, you talk with people, you get to know the artists, um, that would not be possible in a regular movie theater setting. So. So this is the story of trading stories. Yeah, I think the um, the discussion and the interaction you guys have is really one of the things that's unique about this um, event. And I think that was what I thought was very, really caught my attention. That yeah, and it's the, really fun. Yeah, and the um, the story time in Lakota. Um, yeah, how did, yeah. And... I, I wanted to know more about that. How did that? <laughs> How did the children right. react to that? <laughs> oh, they love it. <laughs> Kids um, have a spendable minds and mm -hmm. open hearts. And <laughs> yeah. so uh, they were thrilled. And frankly, they were not only children. They were several adults as well, which was um, very, very good. I thought uh, it's good that um, adults are able to participate and be interested as well. I have known Vanna Bannon for years. Um, she was one of the first people I met when I moved to Chardon. Very nice lady. She's an authority on uh, Lakota language. She had studied and she continued to study. Um, one little detail that is very funny. When we start to think about the movie festival, we wanted to give a trading story the Lakota name. And then we discovered we couldn't because mm -hmm. we didn't know the exact pronunciation and the exact words to translate. And we didn't want to look ludicrous. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So to have an expert in uh, Lakota language was mm -hmm. this year was very interesting. Yeah. There are not many people that speak or know deeply Lakota anymore. Um, the tribes are trying to preserve the language. Um, I believe I I'm not too sure, but I believe that uh, to hold the office you need to know in Penridge you need to know the language or part of the language so a language it's an integral part of an heritage you lose that and um, you lose lots of your identity mm -hmm. so that is one of the reason why we wanted to to have it she's also the mother of um of it's also the mother of um crystal the other member of the committee so mm -hmm. cool yeah. All right. Anything else before I kind of jumped in there? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, if there. anybody has questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anybody does, we still have some people. Um, looks like everybody is stuck around till the end. Um, I know we're a little past 11 o'clock, but we did start a little bit after um, our usual time at 10 central time anyways. Um, if anybody does have any questions or comments um, about the festival, please uh, type into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface and I can grab that. Um, like I said, this is a um, really cool event. I know when you, you shared information about this to Richard Miller here at the Library Commission, that's when we jumped on the idea of having you share more <laughs> um, <laughs> onto the show here about um, how you, how, it, how the event went. Um, and it sounds great. Yeah, I uh, makes me want, I I wish I could come there. Yeah, it's such it, it's it would be like I'd have to take a little a couple of days vacation out there. <laughs> yeah, well, Definitely. actually, it's uh, a very interesting place in July. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. always interesting, but in July, many many things happen. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank you for having us today mm -hmm. and to give us the opportunity to tell this story. 
Great. Thank you so much. Um, you. It doesn't look like anybody's typing in any urgent questions right now, so I think we will wrap it up for this morning. If you guys do have any All questions right. for what um, about the program and what they're doing out there, um, you can contact Rosella at the Shadron Public Library, and I'm sure she'd be happy to chat with you about, about the whole event and um, what's going to be happening for next year. Um, you're keeping right. it to the same time of year, I assume. You're not going to adjust yes. that. Yeah, okay. during the first three days, and right. uh, you can find the information on our website, but also mm -hmm. on the first, the, on the official full three days site. Right. Um, yeah, and we do have. I've been as uh, Rosal has been talking. I've been grabbing her. Um, Websites and links from everything that all the different places that she mentioned so that'll be available to you guys um, afterwards along with the recording um, And Rosella if you can send me the your presentation uh, yep. This PowerPoint yes, yep. yeah, send me that in yep. email and I'll post it up as well So anybody who wants to get more of the information and the statistics and the details and the movie titles and everything um, That all be included afterwards as well All right, great. Thank all you. right. Thank you guys. Thank you much um, Thank you. Rosella and Marguerite, thanks to you as well for coming on with You're us here with us this morning. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pull back presenter control to my screen here so I can show you. There we go. Um, this is the event for today. Um, as I said, I did um, in our delicious account here. I've grabbed some of the links. Um, the new the the form of the Horse Nation film and library the for trade just some things that you're mentioning news the the news article um, from the South Dakota Public Libraries or uh, radio <laughs> um, yep. so all this will be included when we have the recording put up um, later. Uh, recording will be here on our Encompass Live website. Um, right beneath our upcoming shows is our archives. And here is what we had um, on our previous weeks. And last week we had the recording, presentation, they had a couple extra documents and links. You'll have the same kind of thing for today's show we posted up there. Um, most likely by this afternoon. It all depends on how um, quickly YouTube cooperates with me and when I'm uploading the recording to it after we right. are done here. Um, so that'll be available. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us for next week when we're talking about Nebraska 150 books again. We had um, a presentation about that last month, but we're going to be specifically focusing on um, using the 150 books, the Nebraska 150 books, on um, along with your book group. So um, Lisa Kelly, who's in charge of the, who's our um, information services director here at the Library Commission, will be with us, um, joining us, um, along with Erin Willis, will be back. She was with us talking about the Nebraska 150 books previous. Um, events previously. Um, this is um, related to Nebraska's uh, 150th birthday celebration, the sesquicen sesquicentennial. Yes, if I say it slow, I can say it. <laughs> um, so join us next week to see how you can use those books in um, programming and with book groups at your library. Um, and please do sign up for any of our other upcoming shows. You see we've got some October sessions here. We are having our one week off in October. Our NLA and SLA annual conference is coming up. So that will be the week we take off just so Note that on your calendar, we will not have a show that week. Um, also, if you are big on um, Facebook, please do like us over there on um, our Encompass Live page. We post reminders of when sessions are starting. Um, you can see here is a login. You know, join us right now for today's show. Um, when recordings are available, they'll be posted up here. So if you're um, big on um, following things on Facebook, give us a like over there, and you can keep up with what we do that way. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning's show. Thank you very much again, Rosella and Marguerite, for uh, sharing about um, trading stories with us. And thank you, everyone, for attending. We'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.